In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create an amazing creative portrait manipulation called the pillow face punch effect. Let's go. What's up y'all? My name is Renz. I'm a digital artist from the Netherlands and today I got a very, very fun effect for you that I want to show you. Actually, some of you guys have been requesting this since I've posted this image on my Instagram. And well, here's the tutorial on how to create this amazing effect. Let's go. So before I started in Affinity Photo, I created this very simple setup with my camera. I used the back of this door as my backdrop and I simply set up my camera and some simple lighting right on top of my camera. Then I would simply kneel down because my tripod isn't that high and I used my remote to set a timer to take some photos. Now these photos are nothing special, if you don't have a good camera you can simply take them with your smartphone, however to make things easy you want to make sure that both pictures are taken from the same perspective and preferably with the same lightning. Once that was done it was time to take the photos from my camera and import them into my laptop. Alright so we've jumped into the computer and here we have the images that I just shot and I think I will use this one right over here. And for the pillow punch, I think I'll be using this one because this one has a lot more texture in the pillow than this one. So I've opened both of them already in Affinity Photo. So here is the first image and this is the second image. And what I want to do now is simply import them into my document. So I've created a new document from 2000 pixels times 2500 pixels. And I'm simply going to press Command C on this layer go into my document and press command V and you can see that we have quite a big picture right over here. So I'm going to drag it to something like this looks pretty good to me. And then we're going to open the second picture. So I'm going to go to here, press command C, open my document and press command V once again, double click the thumbnail to zoom out and position this one right in the middle of my face. So somewhere here looks pretty good to me. All right, so once we have our images in place, now we can start masking some stuff out. So as you can see, I've got my fist right in the middle of my face and I think this looks good. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to apply a layer mask. And in this case, a simply normal layer mask. Click on the layer mask, choose any brush. So I'm going to choose for a soft round brush and I'm simply going to mask out everything that I don't need. So all of this around my face, let's say. I'm not going to need for sure. So let's brush this one out, something like this. So this is going to be a very rough mask, let's say. So we will tweak this later. Of course, I'm not going to need the pillow here on uh, at the side of my arm. So I'm going to use my pen tool to make a quick selection right over here so that we have a nice sharp selection. Now I want to turn this thing into a selection. So I press this button on, on the context toolbar to turn it into a selection. And now I want to invert my selection. So I'm going to press command shift I on the keyboard on a Mac to invert the selection. Now I want to go back into my layer mask, select my brush tool. And as you can see right now, I can only mask out until my arm and I won't mask out my arm. So this is very, very useful when creating certain masks, let's say. So this looks pretty good to me. Let's <coughs> let's go to the bottom part and do the same thing. So we're going to brush this part out. And well, I think this looks pretty good to me. All right. Now, what I want to do is blend this pillow a little bit better with my face, but I don't want to mess around with the original mask. So what I'm going to do is create another mask and clip it to my pillow layer. So we're basically stacking masks. And now simply use the soft round brush once again. And yeah, just try to blend this pillow a little bit better with the rest of the face, let's say. So maybe first uh, get back everything that we need. So I'm going to use white in my first mask and make sure that I have a nice selection of my whole face so that I can then use my second mask to mask out and blend the rest in better. All right, there we go. Now let's go into the second mask and use a pretty big soft round brush. Make sure black is a foreground color and just blend it in very, very subtle. And of course you can also change the opacity and the flow of your brush. So maybe you want to be more accurate, decrease the flow, decrease the opacity and just brush over it very gradually until you're happy with your result. Now you can see that my eyebrow is showing here. Um, this will fix just in a bit. 
Hey, real quick, if you've been getting value out of this video and you've been enjoying it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more similar content like this, then smash that subscribe button. All right, let's go back into the tutorial. All right, I think that looks pretty good for now. So let's now fix the eyebrows right over here. So I'm gonna uh, hide my pillow layer for now. And I'm gonna go into my portrait layer. I'm gonna select, uh, create a new pixel layer on top and call this one correction. And now I can simply use my in painting brush tool, make sure the setting is set to current layer and below, otherwise it won't do anything. And I'm simply gonna brush out my eyebrow. So that's the first one. We don't have to be too precise because most of it will be covered by our pillow. And let's do the same for this eyebrow. There we go. And for these hairs over here, I want to create a separate correction layer. So I'm gonna call this one maybe eyebrow. And for this, I'm going to use my clone stamp tool. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard, simply sample any from anywhere where it's, let, let's say background and brush over my eyebrow with a soft round brush like this. And now you can see it very, very obviously because there is some slight difference in the color. So what I want to do now is simply create a levels adjustment layer, clip it to my eyebrow layer and darken it a little bit so that it will blend better. And that looks pretty good to me. So now it's almost, or actually it is pretty invisible. Now let's show our pillow layer once again, because this looks terrifying. So let's show my pillow layer. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the color of the pillow to my skin tone. So for this, I want to make a selection of my hand or my arm because the arm, I want to keep it the natural color. Let's say I only want to change the color of my pillow face. So. What I want to do first is maybe select my portrait layer, press W on the keyboard and make a very quick selection around my fist. All right, there we go. So now we have got a selection of my fist. And what I want to do now is I want to select the exact opposite. So I want to select everything except my fist. So I'm going to press command shift I to invert my layer mask. And now I want to create a color balance adjustment layer. So we go into the adjustment layers and click on color balance. And you can see that now, because we had this selection loaded, that Affinity Photo will load this selection automatically for us. So every change that I make into my color balance adjustment layer will be automatically applied only to um, everything except my arm, let's say. And once I clip this one to the pillow layer, so I'm gonna clip this one right over here. Now you can see that it will actually only affect the pillow. So what I want to do now is kind of figure out how to make this pillow the same color as my skin. So I'm going to increase the reds a little bit in the highlights, just a little bit, not too much. Maybe increase a little bit of yellow and go to the midtones. Also increase some red in the midtones. And that starts to look pretty good already. Increase some yellows as well. And now let's go to the shadows and let's see what we have to do here. Also probably add some reds in the shadows. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you enjoy portrait photo manipulation in general, then I've created this amazing playlist for you. You can check it out right over here. I'm sure you will love it. And then, yeah, I guess I'll see you there. Ciao, ciao.